Good evening. Welcome to the uh, general meeting of March 16th for the Livonia Board of Education. Mrs. Uh, Bonifield, rather, would you take the roll? Mr. Centers. Here. Mrs. Jarvis. Here. Mr. Johnson. Present. Mrs. Laura. Here. Mrs. McDonald. Here. Mrs. Bonifield is here. President Burton. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, the next item on our agenda is Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Johnson, would you lead us in the pledge tonight? My pleasure, Mr. President Burton. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'd like to welcome everybody to the meeting tonight. Uh, for those of you who are in attendance tonight, if you would like an agenda to follow along, they'll be found on the back counter just outside the door. If you're following along from home and you'd like an agenda to follow along, you can go to our website, uh, livoniapublicschools.org, hover over the school board tab, and drop down to the agendas, and you can uh, pull up an agenda and follow along tonight. Uh, we will be taking a brief break after item 3D. We have several folks that are going to be honored this evening, and we'll be taking a brief break so that we can congratulate those folks. Uh, after which, you are certainly welcome to stay around for the rest of the business of the meeting. Most of the time, it's okay to disobey what your mom taught you and go ahead and leave if you'd like. It, we won't be offended. You're certainly welcome to stay, but, uh, but if you'd like to, to make a break, that would be a, a good time for you to do so. Uh, next item on our agenda is communications and Mrs. Jenkins. Thank you, President Burton. Good evening. President Burton, members of the board, Dr. Liapa. Uh, tonight we be begin our presentations by recognizing this month's student art gallery honorees. Behind you, you'll notice the incredible art pieces uh, that were created by five students from Stevenson High School. And this month we have more than just five pieces, which is kind of neat. They, they gave us nine to display this month. Uh, just to give you an idea of the many offerings we have in the way of art instruction at our high schools, uh, Stevenson classes, art classes include fundamentals of art, drawing, advanced drawing, painting, advanced painting, jewelry, advanced jewelry, sculpture, advanced sculpture, photo, and advanced photo. All led by teachers Ms. Michelle Morton, Heidi Posh, and Brooke Brewster, who I think all three may be in attendance this evening. Thank you for coming. Uh, let's see, there are approximately 650 students filling those classes this year at Stevenson. Uh, in speaking with the parents of our honorees tonight, um, I learned that some of, I learned that uh, art may not just be a hobby for some of them. In fact, some are considering continuing their art path through college, which is very exciting. We're happy to recognize their talents with this certificate which reads, Livonia Public Schools Certificate of Recognition, Student Art Gallery, Featured Artist, selected to represent the Stevenson High School Art Department at the Board of Education Office, March 16th, 2015. And this is signed by uh, Superintendent Randy Liapa and myself, Stacy Jenkins. Uh, now I'd like to introduce you to our art artists. They're all seniors, so we should also congratulate them on their impending graduation in a couple of months. Uh, first, we have Emily uh, Dangal Dangala, Emily, which piece or pieces um, do you have up there? I have the Heather McLeod right there. Just has work in it. Okay. The painting? Uh, no, the photograph. Right oh, here. down here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And if you could stay up with me. Yeah. Okay. Next, we have Andrew Fairbanks. There you go, Andrew. Come on around. And which piece is yours? Uh, the black and white perspective drawing and the bottle with the two glasses. Okay, excellent. <clears throat> Thank you. Next we have Caitlin McDougall. There you go. And which piece is yours? And the waterfall and horse. Oh, both. Okay. The larger paintings. Uh, Carrie Ronan. Carrie, and which piece is yours? Uh, I have the comic strip 
like in the corner. Okay. And then the sketchbook with the anatomy. Oh, okay. For those of you uh, who cannot see that, she has some skeletal drawings of human anatomy. Mm -hmm. They're very neat pencil drawings. Mm -hmm. And uh, last but not least, Ann Zaras. There you go, Ann. Um, and by process of elimination, we should be able to figure this out. But let us know which piece is yours. Uh, the two photographs, the one of like me holding a picture in front of a wall and of the two kids in the field. Okay, excellent. I also wanted to point out um, this month's art display in the lobby of the board office is also featuring artwork and photography by uh, students from Stevenson. So be sure to check those out. Okay, join, join me in a round of applause for these students. Thanks for sharing your work with us. Thank you, and congratulations to the artists. Uh, for most of us in this audience, including myself, I couldn't begin to do what you folks do, and we are really impressed. You've done a great job, and, and congratulations also to the art teachers that have started from kindergarten and gone all the way up. You guys have done an amazing job. Next on our agenda is item 3B, our Golden Apple Award. Okay, Jenkins. thank you. Uh, tonight we're presenting a very special award to a very special volunteer in our school district. The Golden Apple Award is a long-standing program in LPS that allows parents and staff members the opportunity to bring attention to a volunteer who goes that extra mile in our schools. Whether it's a parent who is ever present in the schools assisting with reading groups or making copies for the classroom, or a grandparent who enjoys helping students with their work, we love the Golden Apple Award because it really speaks to the heart of who we are as a school district. It's all about being a team when it comes to supporting our students. Tonight's Golden Apple Award goes to someone who began volunteering in her children's school 45 years ago. That's right, I did say 45 years ago. Mrs. Cherie Ricardo began volunteering when her son David started school in 1970 at Johnson Elementary School, and she has never stopped. Mrs. B remains a faithful volunteer at the now Rosedale Elementary. But she's not just a volunteer, she's a role model for others to follow. She's upbeat, helpful, dedicated, and consistent. In fact, she's so consistent, this is the second time she's receiving the Golden Apple Award. <laughs> the first time was 20 years ago in 1995 when she received this award in recognition for her crossing guard service. Uh, with her son, uh, when her son David contacted us about recognizing her 45th year as a volunteer, we decided an encore award was in order. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Mrs. Sher uh, Cherie Bacardo otherwise known as Mrs. B. Yes. Welcome. And also, uh, I'd like to invite Rosedale Elementary Principal John Wenstrom to join us as well. There's John. OK. And John has a few words about Mrs. B, as you can imagine. It's all you. Mrs. B. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Stacy did a wonderful job of of expressing all of the years that you've done, but um, truly, um, Mrs. B is everywhere in our building. Um, she she is a constant um, working with students, working with teachers. She's also the reason that I still have a living plant in my office. <laughs> I, I kid you not, I, I turned around one day and Mrs. B was watering my plant. And, and again, that is why I still have a living plant. And so she truly does do everything so in her means building. I have to continue. Yes, now you have to. Yes, yeah. I put you on the spot. So, but I just want to say on behalf of all of our staff and our families and our students, thank you. Thank you very much. Love you. Thank you. And now I'd like to ask uh, Board Trustee Liz Jarvis to join us at the podium. Liz is going to actually present the Golden Apple Award to Mrs. B. Yeah. Nervous? A little. Yes. At least two of us. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, on behalf of Livonia Public Schools, I am delighted to present you with this Golden Apple Award. I know that you've done this before, but that doesn't make this one any less. The appreciation is so sincere. You've been doing this for 45 years. 45 years ago, I was in second grade. <laughs> <laughs> not at Johnson, though. No. no, not at Johnson. <laughs> but it shows the continuity that you've provided, and that is huge. 
So on behalf of Thank Livonia you. Public Schools, I'd just like to mention, though, that at, as part of your nomination, people had the most delightful things to say about you. Um, you were described as being someone who gives unconditionally and never asks for anything in return. They said that you always have a positive attitude and a smile, which obviously we can see that firsthand, that you're quick to ask what you can do to help. It doesn't matter what the task is. Mrs. B can be found working on a variety of tasks at Rosedale Elementary, including assisting teachers making copies, meeting in small groups with students, creating bulletin boards, and much more. According to Sherry Lynn Naden, who nominated you for this award, we love her and feel honored to have her as part of the Rosedale family. Well, we feel honored to have you as part of the Thank LPS you. family. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And Mrs. B, I don't know if you already have one of these, but you can wear this on your sweater. It's a tiny little cute, adorable golden apple. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And you're welcome to say a few words. I would like to. Okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone, this evening for this award and for the nominating people and my little staff people back here and my family <laughs> over here. Um, I'm going to continue recycling my body, I think, through the schools. And right now I'm doing two days a week at Rosedale. And Monday afternoons, I hop over to Johnson because I have two granddaughters here, Jean and Bailey, who are in fifth, fifth grade this year. So I told them I'd share one teacher this year, and next year I'll do a sixth grade for Bailey. And then on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, I'm over at, when Mrs. Platt is in the audience. She's a kindergarten teacher over at Buchanan. I go there and help her. And my most, one of the big things that I like to do is all her art projects. So it's been a whirlwind of 45 years, and I can hardly believe it's been that long. But the first 20, it was really slow. And then after being a crossing guard and a sub pro, it just went so fast. So I'm very happy for them wanting me there, and I hope to continue, and it's been fun. Thank you so much. Thank you again, Cherie, from all of the Livonia Public Schools family. We are grateful for all of our volunteers. And when we have some that hit this kind of a milestone, it's, it is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. The next item on our agenda is item 3C, gift from Rosedale Elementary PTA. Mrs. Okay. Jenkins. Thank you, President Burton. Uh, this is a nice segue into our ne next item because uh, not only do we have awesome volunteers like Mrs. Bricardo at Rosedale Elementary, we also have an active and generous group of parents who volunteer their time in the Rosedale PTA. Uh, one, one function of the PTA is uh, to recognize fundraisers for the school. Uh, tonight we're recognizing the fruits of those efforts by presenting a, a gift re recognition for your acceptance. And I'll now ask for a motion for that. Thank you. Uh, may I have a motion, please, for the table? President Burton. Yes, Mrs. Bonifield. Move that Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the generous donation totaling $5,100 from the Rosedale Elementary PTA to Rosedale Elementary School. Support. The motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Centers. Okay. Um, as stated in the resolution or the motion, uh, the Rosedale PTA has donated $5,100 for the purchase of iPads and iPad ca cases for every classroom in the school. Uh, joining us once again is Rosedale Principal John Wenstrom, um, who will tell us a little bit more about this donation. John? Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, well, in addition to this year, actually, we've had a history of generous donations from our um, PTA. The last several years, they've um, supported literacy in our building through the purchase of level literacy intervention kits um, that cost thousands of dollars, and those kits are used each year um, with some of our struggling readers. Um, and this year, we came to the board, uh, to the PTA board. They helped us purchase some uh, uh, nonfiction uh, literacy science books at the beginning of the year. And at the end, there was a little left over, but not enough for our big project. Um, we had a goal this year of getting iPads into each of the classrooms. Um, and with um, Title I funds, we were able to purchase um, 
some for some of our struggling students, but we had a vision of um, including that for all students to have access to those iPads. And so with the generous help of the PTA, we were able to purchase an additional iPad for uh, each classroom. Uh, those have just arrived. I've uh, gotten word from um, our technology department. They're being processed right now. We're hoping to have them in our building um, later this month. And so we are thrilled. We've already had a staff member go to a training to help our teachers be trained um, to work with the iPads. We're planning on using them for both intervention for struggling students and also uh, for enrichment uh, for students who are going uh, above and beyond. And so that only is a reality um, due to the partnership with our PTA. <clears throat> Excuse me. I do want to recognize our president, Rebecca Willosen. If uh, Rebecca could come up here, I want to publicly thank her and all of our PTA board and volunteers uh, for making this happen because this makes a real difference for our students and for our classrooms. And so we appreciate you. Yeah, thank you. Does anybody on the board have any questions or any comments about the gift? Thank you. Yes, thank okay. you. And Mr. Johnson? Just a question. We're, we're always interested in what did you do to raise the money? It was actually through our fun walk that we had this year. So we actually hit our goal the first time ever. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Congratulations and thank you. Any other comments? Uh, will you please take the roll, Mrs. Bonifield? Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion passes. Perfect. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 3D, Read Across America Resolution. May I have a motion? Pres President Burton. We're also getting used to that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Still. Uh, supposed to be President Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, Mrs. Laura. Thank you. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adapt the attached resolution in recognition of Read Across America during the month of March 2015. Support. We have a motion on the table by Mrs. Laura, supported by Mrs. McDonald. Mrs. Jenkins. Okay, thank you, President Burton. Um, celebrating March as Reading Month is always a fun time in our school district, uh, particularly at our elementary schools where activities abound. It's sort of like a, a high school homecoming spirit week during the entire month of March, uh, especially in our elementaries. Uh, special activities, theme days, and even contests all centered around reading. At Grant Elementary, where my son is a fourth grader, uh, the PTA and staff have taken reading to the next level with a sports theme that includes a Grant Hall of Fame. Um, it's literally the hallway, is the Grant Hall of Fame, and it's uh, lined with handmade baseball card style uh, cards for every student in the school. Uh, they're so cute. Um, let's see, they're highlighting each of the students. Um, in the front lobby, there's a mini stadium and a tailgate area. Uh, where they even have what appears to be AstroTurf put down and some stadium seating and uh, a tent and everything, a tailgating canopy. Uh, let's see, and all of this is set up for their avid readers at Grant. Uh, School-wide read-ins and contests build on, this, on the excitement of March's Reading Month. Activities such as these are happening all around our, our district, and tonight we're bringing that excitement to you by way of a special resolution to recognize the Read Across America initiative uh, of the National Education Association. Now I'd like to invite Vice President Diane Laura to read the resolution we have presented for approval tonight. Thank you. Whereas citizens of the Livonia Public Schools School District firm stand firmly committed to promoting reading as a catalyst for our students, future academic success, their preparation for America's jobs of the future and their ability to compete in a global economy and Whereas, Read Across America, a national celebration of Dr. Seuss's 111th birthday on March 3rd, 2015, is sponsored by the Livonia Education Association in cooperation with the National Education Association and promotes reading and adult involvement in the education of our community students, 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that the trustees of the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District call upon their citizens to assure that every child is reading together with a caring adult throughout the month of March. Celebrated today, March 16, 2015, with the Livonia Public Schools Board of Education and therefore be it further resolved that this board recommits our community to engage in programs and activities to make America's children the best readers in the world. Thank you. Support. Terrific. Are there any comments or questions on our Read Across America resolution? Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll? Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We will now take a, a five, ten minute break or so uh, so that we can congratulate our honorees of this evening.
Welcome back to the uh, continuation of our regular meeting of March 16th for the Livonia Board of Education. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3E, written communications. Does any board member have written communications they would like to share with the board? Okay. Seeing none. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 3F, audience communications. Uh, this is a time that the board sets aside to listen to comments from the public. Uh, it is not a time for us to have question and answer back and forth because uh, frequently uh, not everyone in the room has all the same information. So if it's an item that needs to be addressed in the future, the board will do so. But this is a time for us to listen to any concern, uh, concerns or comments or questions from the public. Uh, we do have a three-minute time limit on each person, and that's in order to make sure that everyone has a fair opportunity to speak who would like to do so. Uh, I do have two blue slips in front of me. If anyone would like to, to uh, make comments to the board, if they would not mind filling out a blue slip, I believe there are some on the podium still. Are there on the top part there? Uh, if they don't, if they would not, if you not mind uh, filling one of those out and letting, uh, let me see here, passing that up to us. Uh, I have a couple right now, and then we will. Looks like we may have several. <laughs> Mrs. Jenkins, do you mind? Um, being in the front row just to gather blue slips as folks uh, have those ready. Sure. Thank you. The first blue slip that I have is from John Grisbeck. Thank you, President Burton, members of the board, Dr. Leopold, and community members. I just stand here as the legislative and advocacy chair for the Livonia PTA Council, and we're holding an event. It's, and many of you have heard it. It's been in the Observer. I was notified it was also in the Detroit Free Press, and we've put it on Facebook and a variety of other ways of communicating it. It's March 26th. It's a legislative evening with your legislators at the Livonia Patriot Inn. And the Livonia Patriot Inn's been pretty famous. They were the 15th the other day. Uh, the culinary program over there, Chris and Andy, and the, the, the students, if you haven't eaten lunch there, you should. Um, it's a really nice program where they learn the culinary trade. Um, our Livonia High School students, of course. Um, so this, all five of the legislators that represent Livonia Public Schools, so you got Senator Kolbeck, Senator Hunyan Hopgood, Representative Laura Cox, Representative Julie Pilecki, and Representative Robert Kozlowski, and I apologize if I said those names wrong. Um, it, it, we do ask that you RSVP again. It's March 26th at 7 o'clock at Livonia Franklin Patriot Inn. Um, you can RSVP to me. Um, my ETA address is john.grzebik at livoniapublicschools.org, or you can use my, my uh, personal one too. Uh, j that is small j g r z e b i k s b c global dot net. So either way, we do ask that you RSVP as soon as possible so we know for a great ingredients because in addition to the legislators being there, and it's meet and greet style by the way, so there won't be a panel or anything like that. It'll be where you get to meet one on one with one of the five legislators or more of them. Um, and talk about any issue you would like to talk about. I'm sure the road issue will be come up as well as other school funding and those kinds of things. So we want it to be apolitical. It has to be PTA. It has to be apolitical and um, informative and you can talk about anything you want, like I said. And also, Dr. Leopold will be um, at our meeting, I believe, at Churchill for Livonia PTA Council. Um, the meeting starts at 6.30, but the actual workshop's at 7 to discuss Proposal 1. PTA, by the way, before I leave, hasn't taken a position on the roads yet. We're going to learn at the PTA convention um, what their position is for sure and go from there. Um, but we do want to be informative as possible. Thank you very much, Madam President. And I'll leave the flyers here, too. Nothing fancy, but we do have a flyer. I'll leave them through Jill. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. The next blue slip that I have is Daryl uh, Little. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, we're, uh, we would like to keep the uh, property over there where the Washington School used to be that they tore down. We would like to have a little park over there because in our area we have nothing. You know, Castle Garden, she got uh, Sheldon Park over there. They got pools and stuff like that. We don't have to have a pool, but we would like to have a little park for our kids so that they can play on the play areas and softball, baseball, whatever, you know, and that's what we'd like to see happen over there. And we hear that the church might be interested in buying it, and, uh, you know, we just want to keep it a park because we have nothing. And we've got all them houses all the way down to Newburgh, too. So okay. that's, uh, that's what my take is on it. Okay. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Mrs. Jenkins, do you have any other blue slips? Thank you. Thank you. 
The next blue slip that we have is uh, Jeffrey Nodal. I'm pronouncing that correctly? Nolte. Nolte. Sorry about that. Uh, thank you, Board. Um, I only found out probably about a month or so ago that, uh, that the Washington site was up for sale. It is in my backyard. Um, I was kind of disappointed with um, a couple things, you know, how long it took for it to be torn down. Uh, I-96 got started after it and got done. You know, the site didn't even get fully done until after I-96 was done, too. Um, we don't need more buildings there, offices. Um, you know, we have um, multiple places, um, businesses that are, that are vacant. Um, there's a couple down by Family Video. There's a few of them by Little Caesars Pizza. There's another one by the Dollar General store. There's a restaurant by Dunkin' Donuts that keeps failing. We don't need more stores. We, that, that is the last thing we need. There's, my kids are back there all the time. My daughter went to Washington School. There's people that um, cross-country ski back there. There's people that take their dogs back there all the time. And, and as um, Daryl said, we don't have a park in the neighborhood. We have this one little itty-bitty play structure, and that is it. If you want our kids to go do other things and find things to do, that's fine and that's great. But I, I'm, I, and maybe it's you know something for the park and recreations to pick up. But I'm just letting you know we don't have anything, and we're always told by the school district that they always want our kids outside. You guys have a choice. You know I know somebody mentioned that 300 people made a vote and decision. I never heard about that. Didn't know anything about it. Didn't see anything. Like I said, I only just found out, and it is in my backyard. Um, the other thing I want to make a comment about is that we were also told that the Washington School, we would have bricks, that the bricks would be laid out for any of the residents to grab that wanted them. Like I said, it's in my backyard. I never once saw any bricks. My daughter, who went to school there, never got a brick. So I don't know what happened with that, but that was kind of disappointing too. So that's my piece. Thank you. Thank you. The next blue slip that I have is from Mike Lightbody. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. My name is Michael Lightbody, and I'm here to comment on the potential sale of vacant LPS properties. My wife, daughter, and I live in Dover Arbor Estates, near the land on which Washington Elementary previously sat. It's of great concern to us what happens to this site. Both my wife and I have lived in Livonia our entire lives and are graduates of the Livonia Public School Systems. In a few years, my daughter is going to begin her education within the LPS. We're concerned with both school programs being funded and the landscape of our surrounding neighborhood. Some of my fellow Dover Arbor residents voiced their concerns at this meeting and a February 9th meeting about what happens to this site. While I personally may not share the same concern for it remaining a park, I'm very concerned with what this land will be developed into. Property values can be drastically affected in the long term by whatever is built on that spot. Some things I would vehemently oppose are any sort of apartments, cheap housing, religious facilities, low-end retail shops, etc. Acceptable developments, in my mind, would be single-family homes, mid- to higher-end retail shops, or anything that can be agreed upon by the community as a value-added project. In listening to previous meetings, I heard a couple things that troubled me. One, it was mentioned the idea of selling the property was overwhelmingly popular at a community forum on the budget struggles of LPS. The number of attendees referenced was 300. 300 in a city of over 100,000 is not a great sampling size in my mind, particularly when the primary topic was school funding programs, not what effect the real estate development would have on the community as a whole. The people at that meeting were there to discuss school funding and what sort of revenue enhancements can keep school programs. There are many other Livonia residents who don't have children or whose children have already graduated. That sort of meeting would not have caught their eye. Now, a meeting specifically about developing vacant property in their neighborhood, that would garner a whole different audience and level of interest. The second thing that troubled me was the commentary that we're just investigating options. And I mean no offense, but no one sends, uh, spends substantial sums of money demoing that spot and then also hiring a real estate developer. If you... Uh, and again, I'm not against selling that property. The concern I have is what that land will be developed into. I hope Great Northern Consulting is bringing all their knowledge to bear and find us the best options. I feel focusing on the long-term beneficial options versus the quick buck options is what's going to be most helpful to the community and the school systems. If something comes in that devalues the surrounding area, that is going to equate to less money coming in for property taxes and in turn less money going to the schools. I've seen certain parts of Livonia deteriorate over the years, and I actually think this particular neighborhood has great potential. 
Uh, it borders a popular Plymouth community. It has wonderful freeway access, and it's full of people who take excellent care of their homes. The other thing I've heard is that Ford Livonia Transmission is going to be hiring as many as 1,000 new employees. That could be an influx of money to local businesses and the real estate market in the area. We only want something that's going to enhance the area and the school system. My request would be that the board keep their surrounding, or the, or excuse me, the surrounding community actively engaged and try and get majority support before pulling the trigger on anything that would be developed. Again, a quick infusion of money may not be the best thing long term. Um, the last thing I'll say is a side note, since there are neighbors very concerned about where children can play, um, is making something of the open land behind the subdivisions and perhaps creating something there. Um, we could use a small amount of money from the sale to do this. There are two fairly large fields uh, that would seem to fit the bill, but again, that's just a thought. So thank you for listening. Thank you. President Burton. Yes. Um, can we make a clarification? Uh, Dr. Leopold, we did not, may I? You can make a factual correction. Well, uh, uh, that we did have not hired a developer. That, and explain. Well, when we're done with the last well, one, okay. I can give an overview right. of where we're at. Okay. Uh, we do have one more blue slip. Uh, that is uh, Kim Ballhorn. I'm sorry. We have two more blue slips. Well, I'm back. And I said I had some friends that was concerned about the Washington area. And they all decided to come today. So, um, you know, again, in regards to, I did some investigation, talking to neighbors and everything in regards to the um, land. No, housing for the people is the biggest investment most people are ever going to make in their life. So when I looked for the, uh, where to live at. I looked at because I thought my kids are going to Washington, and it closed a year and a half before my son went. Then with regard, in regards to, the, well, we have a playground so they can play. Now if that goes... We're going to get in a cyclical a cycle again, like we were talking about. I talked to a few people, one for the, the, Levone, the LJAL. They said at one time that they were looking to use the fields, the baseball diamonds in there. The one, they said, now that you took down the fence, they might not be able to use it. But the other one in the back, it, had to, it would have to be um, redone, and they could do it, and they can use that field. The other one is Livonia City Soccer, said that they're looking for field, fields again. We can rent this out. Again, what my thing is, and Dr. Lipa, I know your job is a very hard job, and I'm not here to, you know, to argue with you. We want to work together. You have in the schools, the leader in me, the synergize and everything else, I like to use St Stephen Covey's, the, it's called the third alternative. It means it's not your way, it's not my way, it's working together to find a third alternative. And the third alternative for us is one of the realtors that does a lot of selling in that area he told us, if you don't have a playground, it's not attracting families. Families don't want to go there. If you're not attracting families, you're not going to bring in kids to the schools. Right now where my kids go to school at Randolph, great school. When my, my son went to school there, there was 325 kids. Now I think there was like 260. Now I heard that there's a rumor that there might condense again. Now exactly where do we start? We need something to attract the families. And in regards to school of choice, I wouldn't be opposed to school of choice if you invested in my community to attract the family so my kids can have someone to play with. And, and, and then, again, this is a reinvestment into the schools because more kids go to school. When you have more kids go to school, you get more from Michigan for the per purpose. And it goes back in. You're getting rental from all the sports teams. So it, it's all going back in. A lot of these people here bought houses because of Washington School is just a walk away. It took, that, that's gone down. Now we're asking you for the playground to stay there for us, our kids, because as you know, if you don't give options for the kids, they'll find other options and they'll do something. You know, we had um, talked to the neighbors. I mean, one of the things is that pavilion. So we could put a pavilion there and get $100. I know there's people. We have block parties. We can have a community party and raise funds for you to help out with things. This is an old-fashioned community where we come together and we talk. So that's why I want to talk to you. Again, in regards to, um, you know, um, I'm optimistic that we can work together and that we can find something that we can keep it. And... 
we have many more neighbors that wanted to come up here and also talk about that. Thank so you. hopefully you take care of our thoughts. Okay, thank you. Uh, at the time we began our audience communications board members, we did have four to five slips. I do have three additional slips, which would put us beyond our 15-minute time limit. Do I have anyone who would object to hearing from the last three board members before our business portion of our meeting? Anyone object if we hear the last for three? Okay. In clarification to our audience, normally if we have four to five, we have enough time to handle it before our business, and any remainders come after our business portion. If there is no objection from the board, then we will go ahead and hear the last three right now so that you don't have to sit through more of our business before you go on with your evening. Uh, I would respectfully request that everyone do, and everyone has been so far, keeping a good job to keep you to the three minutes. I do appreciate that. Uh, our next person to speak is Cynthia Dempsey. Thank you. My name is Cynthia Dempsey. I live on Nolson, right behind Washington. The reason we bought our house, Washington, and the playground. Nice neighborhood. But I'm here to voice my concerns on the sale of the Washington school land. I feel if I don't come here and speak, and it, something happens, then I can't say I didn't try. Um, there's so many things that could be done with the land. It could be, it could have had two nice baseball fields. The parks, my, my husband coached and umpired LJAL. They had to go to Compton, Dooley, McCann, Sheldon, Castle Gardens. Nowhere local. We had to drive across Livonia just to go to the park. So, it, I mean, and there'd be other people that we'd be playing that would just ride there on their bike from their, you know, neighborhood. But our kids all had to be driven across Livonia because we didn't have baseball diamonds. Um, we wanted to keep it as green space, okay? Um, I think a great idea would be a, a walking trail. Um, like um, Kim had said, LJAL, uh, the Orioles, and um, Livonia Soccer, they're looking to you know utilize land there as well. And um, I spoke with Dave Owens, our local realtor, and uh, I said, Dave, what, what, what draws people to neighborhoods? Well, schools, parks. Well, we don't have a school. And now we're not going to have a park. Um, and I also was very disappointed with the bricks. My children attended <coughs> K through 5 there. Um, and... Every day I went up there and I took a picture of Washington. It was very sentimental to me. I, I, I work full time and I volunteer. I took time off work and volunteered in my, both my son's classrooms. And um, um, I just, I don't, people say, you know, bring in retail, bring in industrial. I mean, I just think of all the empty buildings that we have in our area, from, you know, by CVS, you know, by uh, Family Video. I mean, you know, they're not being taken off. Why would anybody want to, you know, put that in our backyard and have it sit empty? So thank you for your time. Thank you. Our next uh, blue slip that I have is from Keith Noble. Hello. Um, I grew up in this neighborhood. I'm 37 years old. I was born and raised there. Um, my wife and I moved to this neighborhood with two kids with the intent to uh, go to Washington. Um, two years later, the school was closed, which, you know, we dealt with. And, you know, they were going to go to Randolph, and you know, which was fine. And we heard it was going to be green space. And, you know, we were okay with that because they'd have a park somewhere to play, something to do, but to develop it into apartments or a church or something of that nature, it's uh, it's not something like they touched on where the kids can do something rather than sit home, play video games, all the things we tell them not to do. Um, I think it's it's hard for everybody in the neighborhood to think of the kids not having anything to do and to 
be without what we had and what I had in this neighborhood because I've been there my whole life. So to see this, and it, it, you know, we're all really passionate about it, it's, it's, it's wrong. Because we go to other neighborhoods, our kids play soccer, baseball, we have to go to Devonair, LJL, you know, we have to put our kid in Farmington soccer. And uh, because the fields are so poor, there's nowhere to go. You know, we were in, going to Dickinson, and uh, those fields are poor. It's like we're not keeping up our own neighborhoods and our own backyards, and we rely on you guys to provide that. And we feel like we're paying tax dollars to keep this neighborhood up, and it's not being done. There's a park on the other side of the neighborhood that's been nothing for 37 years I know of. It's, it has nothing. And now the one thing they have is going to be gone. And we're not okay with that. I mean, we can put a church there. We can put apartments. But what is that going to do? It's not going to attract kids, families. We see houses go up for sale, and they sit there, and they sit there, because people don't want to bust their kids. We didn't, and now we have to. And that's, that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. The last blue slip that I have is from Tara Noble. Well, they've already said everything, so I just want to reiterate, that's my husband, we moved to this neighborhood specifically for my kids to go to school there. A year and a half into it, they closed it, so I got one and a half years of my kids going to a great school that my husband and his sisters and brothers went to. And we are four houses away. It was perfect. It was location. It was the school, everything. They close it. We go to Randolph. It's a great school. Don't get me wrong. But then they take everything else away. We have nothing. Someone had brought up a dog park that we have in our neighborhood. It's in a secluded area with a bunch of trees surrounded by homes I don't know. I would rather my park for my kids to be in an open area like he said, we had to go to Farmington to go take my 16-year-old to soccer that he's been playing for 10 years because Livonia's fields were so bad. This is a great location for soccer or for softball. I have two girls in softball. Like It's a great location for that. It's a great land. It's open. It's in the middle of all of these houses that, are attract, that could attract potential younger families and be totally beneficial. It's we already have to go so far. My daughter's on a bus for 40 to 45 minutes a day to and from school because the school closed. So if anything, if I could get a park for her to play at, then she won't be stuck in my house playing video games or, you know, I have to drive an hour or half hour to get her to and from another friend's house. You know, when we all grew up, we, we could walk to our friends. Our kids can't do that now because they don't want to come into our neighborhood because there's nothing for them to do. So I just ask that you you just think about it because it's it's not a good decision to bring in more businesses when we have businesses that are closed. I mean, we've had a video store that was closed for years, a party store that was closed for years that are just now getting back on their feet, and there's nothing else for them to do. There's nothing. They, they need somewhere to go. They need to get out of the house, and we don't want them to be you know, these kids that stay in the house and can get into trouble. We want them to go somewhere. And if I feel safe that they can go somewhere in my neighborhood, that's where I'm going to let them go. So that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Leopold, did you want to make a comment? Uh, just a couple. Um, as you mentioned earlier, this typically isn't our time to, this isn't a community forum here tonight. It's our, our board meeting to have business. But uh, just to take the opportunity, because we have so many people here, to share a little bit about what we're at and, and what we're thinking uh, and first, uh, just thank everybody who not only came out tonight, but who uh, took the time to share uh, what their thoughts are as it relates to the property. Uh, as we look at this right now, what we're doing is we're looking at and doing our due diligence on the property, topographical surveys, and so on. 
And part and parcel of that is you do determine what's best used for the property uh, if it's going to be redeveloped. And the types of things that we heard tonight are the types of things that we're confident are going to be part of whatever a potential development uh, could be there. And so I would be very surprised if they came back and said either retail or industrial or apartments would be appropriate for that particular piece of property. And that's something that we do have some input in uh, going into it. And so uh, we're comfortable that whatever would come out of that would be something that would be good, not only for the neighborhood, but for the, the overall community over there and would uh, uh, be the, the best uh, potential uh, long-term use for the, 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 uh, the area. Having said that, separate from our process, there's a process that, ha that they have to go through with the city because the city ultimately has to approve the zoning on the property and they have to approve any development there. So not only do you have uh, our thoughts that would be similar to the, the types of ideas that you've had in regards to uh, what we would not want to see there, uh, I'm confident that that's the same thing that would happen in that process with the city and, and uh, they have to go through that and, and you would have an opportunity you know, with them also to provide your feedback. So um, when we talked about initially looking into this, one of the things that we wanted to do was to uh, hear from the neighbors in regards to uh, what types of things you wouldn't want to see there, what maybe you could, we could do to enhance uh, a potential development that would make the most sense if it was going to go to the next step. So, uh, so know that that is, is our thinking in regards to moving ahead, number one. And number two, know where we're at in the process, which is really just getting an idea of what actually could go there based on a topographical survey in regards to what's what's the what, what condition is the property in and what what could go there. So um, the next step then would be to uh, have our uh, real estate person who's working with us to um, give us some ideas of what would be the best use there. And again, uh, I would be shocked if it's any different than several of the comments uh, that we heard tonight in regards to what shouldn't go there or what kind of uh, uh, homes and so on would make sense to go there. So uh, having said that, that's where we're at in the process, and we'll make sure to continue to get information out uh, to you as it relates to where, where we're at in the steps and what's coming up next. So if there's actually someone in the neighborhood that wants to take the responsibility of getting information out to the neighbors, we'd be happy to take a name. If you want to send us an email or a note tomorrow saying, hey, I want to be on the list to be updated, uh, get us that information and we'll make sure to get you information as we continue to move through this process. But we are going to uh, want to have uh, uh, feedback as we move forward because when we think about uh, what potentially we may do there, I think uh, we're, we're, we're feeling the same way you are. If we're doing something that's going to take away from the community or take away from the neighborhood over there, that doesn't help anybody out. It doesn't help our school district out at all because we want people to move into the area there. So. Uh, so we have uh, similar uh, similar goals, I think, at the end of the day, even if it's not a complete agreement in regards to if, you know, can we put homes there and how many homes, et cetera. Uh, if we can get feedback of things we could do with a development that would uh, be nice for the neighborhood, maybe have some park area or something along that lines, that's what we want to, that's what we want to be able to try to do. So that's right in the process. And if you get us that information, we'll make sure to keep you up to speed uh, on what's coming up. We have not even done an RFP right now to go out and have people come in and uh, put bids in on the property, so we're not even there yet. But uh, so there's a little bit of time. But but um, as that as we go through that process, we'd be happy to keep you informed. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lipa. The next item on our agenda is item 3G, response to prior audience communications. Uh, I I have no uh, no response to prior audience communications, Dr. Lipa. You don't have any either. And again, thank you to the many residents who came out to share your thoughts with us this evening. It is listened to and appreciated. The next item on our agenda is item four, consent agenda. May I have a motion? Uh, President Burton. Mrs. McDonald. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District approve the following consent agenda items as recommended by the superintendent. 5A, minute of the regular meeting of February 9th, 2015. 5B, minutes of the closed session of February 9th, 2015. 7A, bills for payment March 17th, 2015. Support. We have an, uh, a motion on the table by Mrs. McDonnell, supported by Mark Johnson. Do we have any questions or comments or concerns on the item? 
Mrs. Bonifield, will you go ahead and take the roll, please? Mrs. McDonald. Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 6A, Focus School Quarterly Report, and we'll be hearing from Mrs. Alice. Thank you very much. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I apologize. Before you uh, get started, could oh. I have the uh, copies of our closed session minutes to pass down? Sorry. Thank you. I apologize for the interruption. Mrs. Alice, you're on. Okay. Thank you very much, President Burton, and good evening, everyone. Tonight's focus school presentation is one of four um, required presentations to our Board of Education in which we share with the board our efforts to close student achievement gaps in our school district. Before I begin tonight's presentation, I thought I would share very briefly some background information. Our current school accountability system, which meets requirements as outlined in our state's approved waiver of NCLB requirements includes multiple components. Three of those components include our school accountability scorecards, which we receive annually. It includes the top to bottom list where schools are ranked across the state of Michigan. It also includes the um, school status labeling in which some schools are identified as a reward school, a focus school, or a priority school. In LPS, we have one reward school, five focus schools, and no priority schools for this school year. Having focus schools um, includes a variety of requ many requirements which we have to meet. One of those requirements is to provide your Board of Education at a public meeting four quarterly reports on the progress that focus schools are making to reduce their student achievement gaps. And our five focus schools are Cass Elementary School, Garfield Elementary School, Frost Middle School, Churchill High School, and Franklin High School. Tonight's presentation is the second of the four quarterly reports. In January, I presented the first quarterly report, and at that time I told the Board of Education that we have a requirement this year to use the state's template for our focus school presentations and our quarterly reports. Um, this requirement is due to the fact that there was such a great deal of disparity between the content of the reports and the depth of analysis that was included in the focus reports last year. So our focus school template for the second quarter is 13 pages long. And rather than read this report to you this evening, I will make copies of them and give them to Dr. Leopa to include in your um, board packet this week. And after tonight's presentation, this report will be uploaded to the state's website. However, I am required tonight to share with you some required content, which covers the actions that our schools have taken during the last three months of December through February to reduce their achievement gaps. I have to cover um, specific areas. I must present information about diagnostic um, data dialogues as well as the identification of teaching and learning priorities that are a result of those data dialogues. So I'm going to share some information beginning at the district level and then I'll move to the school level. So beginning at the district level, Five years ago, our district adopted Class A as our assessment data warehousing system. Um, since that time, we are now transitioning to a new data warehousing system called MyStar DNA, which will replace Class A at the end of the school year. We are using the train the trainer models where representatives from each school are being trained by our district's assessment facilitator, Mrs. Kathy Baldwin a representative from Wayne Risa and our own district facilitators. Our school representatives are being trained and then are returning to their schools to train their colleagues. We're hearing from staff involved that the new assessment data warehouse system is much more user-friendly and much more intuitive to use. 
It's also allowing our staff to more closely and comprehensively track student performance and stay informed on student learning. The initial feedback from both teachers and administrators has been extremely positive. Also at the district level, Franklin High School leadership team presented their school improvement plans to our Board of Education in December. The presentation included student demographic information, student learning goals, assessment results, and in interventions targeted at improving student achievement. I continue to meet regularly with the focus school team, which includes principals from our five focus schools, our Wayne Reese School Achievement Consultant, and the directors of both elementary and secondary programs where we share our efforts to address our most struggling students and strategize on how best to reduce our student achievement gaps. The staff at eight of our Title I schools are piloting a new online adaptive math and reading assessment called iReady. This assessment prom provides immediate diagnostic data for grouping students for small group math and reading intervention, identifies specific skill deficits for each student, target skill instruction for individual students, and monitors their progress. The initial response from both Title I administrators and teachers has been very positive. So now I'll move on to the school level. I'll begin at the elementary level, and I will share information about CAS and Garfield School on their diagnostic data dialogues. Both schools are engaged in grade level data digs where grade level teams of teachers analyzed the results of second round of universal screener assessments, with assessments which were administered in January. They re reviewed the specific interventions that were implemented during the first quarter of school and determined which students needed to continue their interventions and which students were ready to be exited. They also identified students scoring below proficiency benchmarks and plan specific interventions for each student based on his or her need. Additionally, at Garfield, each Tuesday, the Garfield Achievement Team meets to review students who have not made adequate academic and or social emotional growth. At these meetings, the team discusses Tier 3 interventions and digs more deeply into specific child study issues. Then, each Thursday, the Garfield Title I staff and principal meet to review intervention groups they discuss progress monitoring of students and plan next steps at servicing their at-risk learners. Moving on to the secondary level and staying on the topic of diagnostic data dialogues, at Frost, the staff dug deeply into last year's MEEP data of their bottom 30% of students and they identified specific subgroup populations that were achieving at low le levels and in need of extra support and remediation. Then the content area department chairs developed assessments that were administered at the beginning of the year and then again at the end of the, second, uh, the, end of the first semester. The departments are reviewing the results of these two assessments to determine growth among subgroups. At Churchill, the administrative staff, content area department chairs, school improvement team, counseling department, and student services department met in cohort groups to review student failure data from the end of the first semester especially focusing on those students who failed more than one class. They examined the data for students who were removed from upper level classes and placed in a lower, lower level class and reviewed data for students in the attendance support group. At Franklin High School, the administrative staff, special education department chairs, school improvement chairs and counselors conducted an analysis of the Right to Learn program used with ninth and 10th grade B-level ELA classes at the end of the first semester to determine if students could be moved out of the B-level classes and into a college-level ELA class. Although students improved their writing from first to final draft, students did not improve at a level high enough that would allow them to be moved to the college-level ELA class at the end of the first semester. This concludes the data dialogues. Now I'm going to move into the teaching learning priorities that each school has identified and implemented as a result of these data dialogues. Again, I'll begin at the sec uh, elementary level and move to the secondary level. At CAS, the teachers are placing an increased emphasis on measurement, especially looking at area and perimeter. Using technology resources, the staff um, are teaching students how to read and interpret charts tables and graphs. 
Staffs are participating in additional PD session on the technology tool Learning A to Z, focusing on integrating this resource into content area classes and into the MESA units for reading and writing. The staff is continuing to implement close and critical reading strategies utilizing collaborative lesson plans developed during their staff meetings in January, and they are continuing to mainstream special education students into the general education classrooms as applicable. At Garfield, teachers continue to emphasize letter and sound ID at the kindergarten level. They are building background knowledge and vocabulary development at all grade levels, K through four, through the use of guided reading groups, MESA reading units, content integration, and tier two interventions. They are focusing on retelling with an emphasis on character analysis at both third and fourth grades, and they are striving to improve automaticity with basic facts and number sense. Again, this is occurring at all grades, K through four. At Frost, in the area of math, an additional math class called Math Connections is being provided to select seventh grade students. And eighth grade students continue to take advantage of phantom time math support with students either being assigned to assistance or self-selecting to attend. The staff have embedded social comfort activities within each classroom to stimulate improved relationships, increase engagement, and further improve building culture. Positive Behavior Intervention and Support Program, otherwise known as PBIS, continues to be a priority at Frost. Formative assessment is a year-long focus for the entire staff. The principal and some of the classroom teachers have been attending professional develop development learning opportunities provided by our curriculum department, and then they are returning to their school to share their learning with their entire staff. At Churchill High School, the staff is continuing their participation in the African American Male Youth Promise Initiative, which is sponsored by the Michigan Department of Education to close the achievement gap among African American males. The school reports that the impact of this initiative is, in resulti is resulting in a reduction in the achievement gap with this subgroup. This year, the Churchill High School began a vocabulary initiative focusing on content-specific words identified by each department. Academic vocabulary posters have been developed and are beginning to hang in all classrooms. The staff discovered that the word not in ACT questions is difficult for students to answer cor correctly, so they are taking steps to include these types of questions in classroom tests. They continue to have monthly Tech Thursday meetings to offer professional development to staff. Teachers are learning new ways to use technology to support student learning. At Franklin High School, the Right to Learn program continues to be used in ELA classes to assist students in the development of their writing skills. The school reports that the expansion of the Right to Learn program with students in non-B-level non classes is a challenge because they're running into a um, limited amount of time to train the teachers on how to use this writing program. In both ELA and social studies classes, teachers are continuing to use the magazine called The Week with students to practice nonfiction reading strategies in content area classes and to have students practice writing summaries and argument essays. And finally, in mathematics classes, the Franklin High School teachers are emphasizing skills to help students increase their ability to read, comprehend, and complete multi-step problems with precision. As you can see from what I have just shared, the staff at all five of our schools have engaged in multiple diagnostic data dialogues about student achievement data. And as a result, they are continuing to um, implement programs or expand existing programs. They are providing double dip opportunities, and they've initiated some new initiatives with the focus on improving the learning of their students and mitigating their identified student achievement gaps. As I mentioned at the start of the program, this is our second focus school quarterly report. There are two more reports that will be provided later this school year. And I thank you for this opportunity this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Ellis. Are there any questions or comments from board members? Mrs. Mrs. McDonald. Uh, Mrs. Ellis, I have a question. Um, you indicated that the focus, um, the 
these reports would be uploaded to the state website. Is there any information that the community can access um, on these reports? If the board chooses to have the report available on the district website, I would be happy to um, make it available. Or if the, any community member would like to contact me or they could contact the individual school, I'm sure they would be happy to provide the report. Okay. All right, great, thank you. Any other comments or questions on this item? Okay, thank you again, Mrs. Ellis. The next item on our agenda is item 6B, approval of district improvement team goals and strategic objectives. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the administration's recommendation to approve the district school improvement team's district-wide school climate goal and two strategic objectives for implementation in the 2015-16 school year. We have a motion on the table by Mrs. Jarvis and support by Mrs. Laura. And we will hear from Mrs. Oquist on this item. Thank you so much, Mrs. Burton. I'm so pleased to bring, with, bring forward to you this evening um, a little more information about the development of our goals and strategic objectives for our district school improvement team. Some of the information that I'll share with you this evening may be a bit redundant from our study session and our committee meeting, but we felt it was important for the benefit of the audience and since you are formally voting on this for the first time, um, that we provide a little bit of background information. So if you'll indulge me, I've included um, in your packet, in addition to the goals on which we'll be, the goal on which we'll be voting, um, a little bit of background information um, that I shared with you at the last meeting. So I'd like to review that briefly. As you know, our school district has a dynamic team of stakeholders that we refer to as the DSIT, or the District School Improvement Team. And the DSIT for many, many years has been uh, focused and engaged on the work related to living our shared vision. Um, as part of this process, we've regularly set district-wide school climate goals, and then each school has developed action plans and identified strategies specific to the data for their school. Um, as part of this process, um, we've also conducted three rounds of surveys with over 12,000 students across our district uh, over the past six years, and we've done that every other year. As you see on the um, attached sheet, we've had uh, the three school climate goals identified here uh, from 2012 to 2014 in the areas of climate and environment, engaged learners, and em employee capacity. As you know from our previous updates, uh, the district school improvement team recommended continuing with our climate and environment goal with modifications and some additional specificity, which I'll talk about in just a moment. We also had a goal related to students being encouraged to give their personal best. Um, and the recommendation from DSIT was to incorporate portions of that into the climate and environment goal, which we have done. And finally, uh, the goal related to staff working collaboratively to support and improve student learning has now moved into the role of being a district initiative. As you may recall, it was a recommended action from the advance ed um, evaluation that we, that we had last year um, that we should continue to move forward in this area. Therefore, this has become one of our district initiatives rather than a DSIT goal. Um, so as I shared with you last week, was it just last week? Two weeks ago. Uh, we really had two options at that point. We could continue with this process of setting our goals, asking schools to develop action plans, and moving forward with um, specific focus areas to their school. Um, or we could establish a new process that really allowed us to dig deeper into the survey data, which you know from the reports we've shared with you each year, um, really was relatively flat and in some cases on a, a bit of a precipitous decline, which concerned us significantly as it related to students feeling emotionally safe in school, feeling respected by the others in the school setting. And so we decided to go ahead and, and dig deeper. And as you know, um, we, sh we conducted 16 focus groups. We um, visited all of our upper elementary, middle school, and high schools and conducted focus group sessions with multiple students at each of those schools. We also conducted, um, at that time, three staff focus groups. Since that time, we've invited in 
a number of other uh, administrative focus groups and a teacher focus group. After that time, we took a look at all of the data that was shared um, with us, not only in the school climate surveys, but also all of the responses we received, both in written feedback from the students and staff, as well as um, the verbal feedback that they shared with us as we moved through um, a focus group process. You'll see on the second page um, a review of the meetings that we've held to date um, since November as, we've, uh, as, as we use the lean term going to Gemba, as we've um, dug deeper into what the data were telling us. Um, we are just at the conclusion. Uh, we have one more administrative planning committee meeting, which we are conducting this Thursday. And we will um, hopefully wrap up this portion of our process and be able to move forward now working with teachers, elementary support teachers, um, student assistance providers, and again, those folks doing the work most deeply with our students each day to develop strategies to implement this goal and these strategic objectives. So that's a little bit of background on where we've been, and I'd like to take you back now to the cover sheet, please. We are recommending that the district school climate goal um, move forward with all students will feel emotionally safe in school. And as you know, that's been one of our KPIs or one of our key performance indicators on which we've collected survey data again over the past six years. Um, but we felt that a, a strong need to define that more specifically. And so as you know from the updates we shared at the study session and at the committee meeting, um, we have drilled down to two um, what we would call pressure point areas where we feel if we can make an impact in these two areas, it will lead us um, to achieving uh, the, the goal that we've set. And so the first strategic objective that I'd like to share with you um, reads, by the end of the 2016-17 school year, Livonia Public Schools will have a greater number of students who use effective skills and strategies that empower them to respond to and successfully interact with peers and adults. And just a little bit of quick background on that for, um, for our audience. One of the things that we realized um, over and over throughout this process is that there are many stressors um, and many uh, challenging times for students that they come across during their uh, years in school. Um, and especially as we talk to our young adolescents and our, um, our, our older adolescents. And what we realized was many of those pressures change. We, we have the advent of social media. We don't see that going away anytime in the near future. But as we also know, um, something different comes out each month. And so rather than trying to attack um, those, those, each of those individual pressure, pressures or stressors for kids, um, we felt it was much more um, impactful to be able to help, um, a, help empower these students by um, teaching effective skills and strategies to respond not only to um, negative interactions with peers, but also potentially um, with adults as well. And we know that whether those students stay with us for a year five years, 13 years, or they move on to another district, um, we feel if we've been able to um, teach those skills, model those skills, and reinforce them, that they will take those with them wherever they go. And so we're feeling, we're pretty excited about this, um, this particular strategic objective, and um, we've had a, some wonderful dialogue with regard to specific strategies and what that may look like by level. Uh, the second one is, uh, by the end of the 2016-17 school year, all of Onia Public Schools school and classroom communities will exhibit and promote mutually respectful interactions. Interactions encompass adult to students, adult to adults, and student to students. And as I shared with you at our committee meeting, we know that this takes place in many of our schools, in many of our classroom communities. What we also heard loud and clear from the teachers with whom we spoke, the, the student assistance providers, administrators, is that uh, most isn't good enough and that we really need this to be all for every student, every classroom, every school, every day. And so these are the two strategic objectives that we'll continue to um, hone and develop implementation strategies um, as well as uh, develop uh, and establish baseline data and then track our progress over the next two years um, with our final collection of data to take place at the end of the 2016-17 school year. That's where we are at this point, and we would like to recommend your approval of the district school climate goal. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. You're welcome. 
Are there any comments or questions from board members? Mrs. Bonifield. I would just would like to um, commend the DSIT on their continued efforts um, in this direction. I think uh, as much as we would like to in our personal lives and in our schools to make um, our children's interactions carefree and remove everything from their lives that may cause them harm or stress is, um, is, is just really not doable and probably not doing our kids any favors because eventually they are going to have to deal with those. Um, so I just, I really appreciate the fact that you, uh, that the team has recognized that there are an overwhelming number of outside factors that we have to deal with, um, that we haven't kept doing the same thing over and over. We've realized that what we were doing wasn't working. We've completely changed our strategy and I am uh, extremely happy um, and, and just love the direction that we're going in with, with teaching the kids the coping skills ra and being able to, to deal with everyday interactions with, ch with their peers and adults and um, not just trying to give them a, a, a clear area to, to, to live in and then go to the outside world and, and have, to, have to deal with um, what we know, unfortunately, is the reality of, of everyday life. Um, so I, I just, I really commend the group, and I'm very excited about this. Thank you. I'll be certain to pass that along. Thank you. Any other comments or questions, concerns? I would just like to comment that I'm, I'm thrilled that this not only uh, addresses student to student, which is where we typically have a first run at looking, but also adult to adult and adult to student. Mm -hmm. Because in a perfect world, everyone plays nice in the sandbox, but we know that that's not always the case every day. And I'm really grateful and, and thankful that we are holding one another accountable as, as adults uh, with one another and, and with adults to students in addition to, to, the, turf, to the typical first run of, of student to student behavior. So it's something that I'm, I'm very thankful for and I appreciate. That's great, and I have to say, I think Mr. Archibald would would concur our administrators have responded so positively to this and are are pretty enthused about moving forward in this direction thank you you're welcome any other comments or questions for any of the board members mrs bonifield will you please take the roll mrs jarvis yes mrs laura yes mr centers yes mr johnson yes mrs mcdonald yes Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 6C, conditional reinstatement of expelled student. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the administration's recommendation to conditionally reinstate a student who was expelled from Detroit Public Schools in January 2015, the conditional reinstatement is effective during the second semester of the 2014-2015 school year. Support. We have a motion on the table made by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. Mrs. Oquist, would you like to address the board? I would, thank you. Per our Board of Education policy in the Michigan uh, Revised School Code, a reinstatement committee was convened on March 5, 2015. And again, per the guidelines, we had two board members serve on that committee, Mr. Centers and President Burton. We also had an elementary principal who would potentially be the receiving principal for this student. We had a fourth grade teacher, um, which is the grade in which this child would be entering. And we also had as required um, by the guidelines, a parent of five either current or alumni um, LPS students and myself. The committee conducted a very comprehensive and thorough review um, of the circumstances that led to the expulsion of this student. Um, this included a review of his behavioral history, um, academics, current and previous um, home settings. Um, in addition, since that time, there have been a, a number of steps and interventions put in place to support this child. Um, and the committee had the opportunity to interview the student, his grandfather, and the receiving principal. Unanimously, the committee is recommending a conditional reinstatement to fourth grade in Livonia Public Schools at Roosevelt Elementary. 
um, as you will see on the letter um, that was passed down to you, um, we have established four conditions um, which must continue to be in place in order to have the student enroll and continue to be enrolled um, as a member of Livonia Public Schools. And again, I appreciate um, all of the members um, on the committee and the very thoughtful and thorough work. Um, they had outstanding questions. Um, we spent an, an extensive amount of time uh, with the family um, as well as um, discussing uh, this reinstatement with, with the receiving principal um, and also via the principal, um, the receiving teacher. Um, and again, it was uh, unanimous that we would like to recommend the conditional reinstatement. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Vipa? Just to add one thing, and maybe stating the obvious, but uh, the reason that our school district is having this reinstatement hearing is because the student does not live within our school district. And uh, so the family that he's with right now is in the Livonia Public Schools. He's a resident of our community. Thank you. Are there any other questions, comments? We have a motion on the table by Mr. Centers, uh, seconded by Mrs. Bonifield. Will you please take the roll? Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mrs. Laura. Yes. Mrs. McDonald. Yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Oquist. You're welcome. Uh, the next item on our agenda is item 7B, approval of bid results for Hayes Elementary School, Kennedy Elementary School, Roosevelt Elementary School, construction and entryway projects for the 2013 bond. May I have a motion? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Move that the Board of Education approve the attached recommendation from the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, to approve the construction project for phase two elementary schools as follows. Hayes, $2,624,935. Kennedy, $2,406,609. Roosevelt, $2,883,158, plus contingency of $730,954 in entryway projects of $87,539, including contingency, for a total of $8,733,195, and authorized Superintendent Randy Leopa to negotiate and execute final contracts on behalf of Livonia Public Schools Board of Education with the contractors on the attached list of contractors awarded bids from McCarthy and Smith, Inc. Support. We have a motion on the table by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Bonifield. I would just like to begin by saying that as I stated at our Committee of the Whole meeting of March 2nd, 2015, a family member, uh, me I'm sorry, a member of my family's company is a supplier to some of the mechanical contractors listed on this document. So therefore, I will be abstaining from all discussion and voting on the item of the Hayes, Kennedy, and Roosevelt construction. Because this company is a subcontractor and does not bid direct to, directly to LPS, I have been advised that I do not have to abstain but I am choosing to do so in order to be completely transparent. To understand the perspective, the company was asked to quote approximately $3,000 worth of cleaner and related products on the school's over $2 million project. And Ms. Abby. Thank you very much. To you. I am going to make a couple of introductory uh, uh, comments uh, as we have a lot of uh, bids before you tonight and then introduce uh, some folks here tonight that will help us with all of these bids. As you know, um, this is our second meeting that we're bringing forward uh, RFPs and bids for our Phase 2 projects. Um, we've already approved the construction for Riley and um, Everson schools. Tonight, we, as you just uh, read, the um, Resolution for Hayes, Kennedy, and Roosevelt, which will be our Phase 2 K-4 schools that we're renovating this summer. Um, we're also bringing forward several bids relative to uh, abatement projects this summer, and then also the approval for the abatement uh, contractor or the person who oversees that for Franklin High School. Uh, as you also know from your very busy March calendar, we will be coming back to you next Monday uh, to talk about the Franklin High School. 
um, bids, and we will bring that to you next week, as well as a couple of um, housekeeping items. We'll be looking at move management next week. You'll recall that we pulled that off, as well as there are two um, bids that were not completed um, for the first uh, Hayes, Kennedy, and Roosevelt that we'll be bringing to you that we did not open and that we rebid. So a couple of housekeeping items, but the big uh, event next week will be Franklin High School. Um, we'll be bringing that to you. Tonight, there are several um, abatement projects. Uh, we'll be looking at the abatement for Hayes, Kennedy, Roosevelt, as well as Riley Emerson, and then Franklin High School. You'll see those in three different motions tonight. I did want to mention a couple of things, and, and I'm sure Paul um, will talk about this as well, but uh, for Hayes, Kennedy, and Roosevelt, um, first of all, for all five of those projects, we are, or six of those projects, we have picked the lowest bid to meet our specifications. So the lowest vendor, lowest bid to meet our um, requirements and specifications. Second of all, for the three elementary schools, those are vendors that we used actually in phase one. Um, we're very comfortable and confident of those vendors. For Riley, Emerson, and Franklin, uh, again, while those are not uh, new to Livonia Public Schools, um, we did have very extensive post-bid interviews with all th uh, several of those companies. Um, we're very confident about their ability to do the work. We've spent a significant amount of time with them. That included our operations staff as well as the um, consulting company ETC or NOVA um, that oversees the abatement projects as well. And uh, again, for them, as you see in your packet, for them to make their recommendation, they do have to feel strongly that they can get the work done. So uh, we are very pleased that we could bring uh, very nice, attractive um, bid amounts on those uh, abatement projects. Um, so with that, I will introduce, we have Mr. Paul Wills here from Plant Moran Cressa. We haven't seen Paul in a little while, so we're excited to have him back. Uh, Mr. Terrio is not available tonight, but that's all right. I think Paul will do a good job. Um, as well as Steve Vincero from uh, McCarthy Smith to uh, help answer any questions we might have. And with that, I'm excited to uh, bring forward the bids as we get forward to getting started on our phase two projects this summer. Thank you, Lisa. And again, my name is Paul Wills. It is good to be back in front of the Livonia Public Schools Board. Uh, relative to the Hayes, Kenny, and Roosevelt, um, those ish, uh, construction documents were issued on January 12th, as issued by French Associates. On February 4th, the bids were due. There's over 182 bids um, from 82 various vendors, so phenomenal bid coverage relative to that. Um, we're going to jump around a little bit from the agenda, but you should all have your work uh, packet from there. And if you were to turn to tab uh, A2, uh, it does have the approximation of the $8,733,195. Um, one of the things we're able to uh, successfully say is working collaboratively with uh, Henry Lau and uh, or Harry Lau, as well as the administration and, and the board and McCarthy Smith, is we're currently $745,000 underneath phase two for these projects. So I um, feel very good about that. Um, on tab A3, this is the McCarthy Smith breakdown for the uh, specific specifications in the bid tabulation sheets themselves for individual contractors. You will note at the back of it, there are six vendors that either withdrew other proposal, and some of it was based on availability of manpower. Uh, when you do school work, it is very aggressive. Um, September, first week of September comes regardless of what's happening in the schools. Um, and in terms of the clarifications for that, those were also included. And then lastly, on tab A4, there is a by project cost which reconciles back to the $8.733 million. And so at this time, I'd like to turn it back to President Burton and the board and Steve Venturo and myself are answer, here to answer any technical questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments by board members on this item? Mrs. McDonald. Uh, thank you, President Burton. Uh, thank you, Paul, for being here this evening. My pleasure. I'm not sure if you'll be able to answer these questions, but I'm going to ask them and we'll see how we go. Um, under tab A3, mm -hmm. um, and it's just, I'm not familiar with, with the scope of this project, so we're just asking the questions. And um, anyway, it's on the alternates where for um, Hayes and Kennedy, it's indicated demo, demo student locker, uh, corridor lockers. Mm -hmm. Can you explain what the scope of that project is and what we're doing? Sure. Hi. Steve Anchor, McCarthy, and Smith. Mm -hmm. Um, if for, you can go back to that tab. Uh, there was an alternate to, there's some existing lockers um, that are to be demoed and they were just the school administration, the principal of the school requested that they get relocated to a more appropriate corridor within mm -hmm. the school facility. 
So that it was bid as an alternate alternate okay. to so make sure. So they're just sure. moving the existing lockers and putting. Basically, them they're okay, good. so it, it's not a large alternate when you total it up. Right. But it was a request by the principal. Okay. That's one of the caveats that we enjoy working with the administration that's are actually in the building because again there are some anomalies between each, between each of the buildings and as Stephen mentioned. You, know, you have some quarters that were tucked in the back hallways which are kind of out of the view of the general public and so always ask for the price and you can always either accept it or reject it going forward okay. thank you any other questions from board members comments all righty we have a motion on the floor by mr johnson supported by mrs bonifield mrs bonifield will you take the roll mr johnson yes mrs bonifield says yes mr centers yes mrs jarvis yes Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. President Burton abstains. Abstain. I abstain. Uh, so uh, motion, motion carries. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is item 7C, approval of bid results for the Hayes Elementary School, Kennedy Elementary School, and Roosevelt, Roosevelt Elementary School abatements from the 2013 bond. And may I have a motion, please? Mrs. Burton? Yes. Mrs. Monfield? Move that the Board of Education approve the attached recommendation from the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, to approve the abatement project budgets. I'm not on the right one, am I? Oh, yeah, I am. Yes. Sorry. You are. Sorry. You're good. <laughs> A lot of pages. Uh, abatement project budgets for Hayes, $95,237. Kennedy, $245,250. And Roosevelt Elementary School, 162,128, and the contingency funds of $100,523 for a total of 603,138. And authorized Superintendent Randy Leopa to negotiate and execute final contracts on behalf of the Livonia Public Schools School District's Board of Education with the contractors on the attached list of contractors awarded bids document from Nova Environmental Inc. Support. We have a motion by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mr. Johnson. And Ms. A whoop, I'm sorry, Mr. Wills. That's okay. Hello, I'm looking down, aren't I? <laughs> That's okay. Uh, no, actually, if you're. Can you write on. Yes. Um, in terms of tab uh, C, which is in your binder, so we're skipping a little bit around the book, which is okay. Um, the scope of work was released in January, and on February 18th, the bids were due. There were eight proposals from three separate firms for the three representative buildings. Uh, as mentioned, the $603,138 is the total for all three. Uh, currently, that's about $56,000 under, um, based on where our benchmark costs were for last year for abatement. Um, even though these are separate contracts, these, these do dovetail into the construction piece. So the abatement will take place prior to the contractors getting in, involved. Um, so again, the awards this tonight will help, allow us to help phase that in very succinctly and uh, move forward with the construction for phase two of the summer. Um, if you were to look at tab um, C2, this is the breakdown both by building as well as contingency for the totals. And then on tab 3, you'll see the cover letter from Nova Environmental, uh, which also has a um, breakdown from the various uh, subcontractors relative to each of the schools and the proposed contractor. Are we all set, Mr. Bills? All set. Okay. Are there any questions or comments from board members? A question, Mr. Senators? Nope. Okay. All right. We have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Bonifield that's supported by Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll? Mrs. Bonifield says yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 7D, approval of bid results for the Riley Upper Elementary School and Emerson Middle School abatements from the 2013 bond. And may I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Laura. Move that the Board of Education approve the attached recommendation from the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, to approve the abatement project budgets for Riley Upper Elementary, $76,005 and Emerson Middle School, $147,100 plus contingency of $44,621 
for a total amount of $267,726 and authorize Superintendent Randy Leopa to negotiate and execute final contracts on behalf of Livonia Public Schools, School District's Board of Education with the contractors on the attached list of contractors awarded bids document from Environmental Testing and Consulting, Inc. Support. We have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Laura, uh, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mr. Wills. Thank you, President Burton. Um, relative to tab D, um, that scope of work also was verified uh, with the district as well as the architects and engineers and contractors to coordinate this work. Uh, on February 5th, there were 10 bids received by five firms. Uh, what you'll notice in uh, tab um, D2, again, is the breakdown both by building, including contingencies, which is tracked on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, in tab D3, you'll see the award letter from engineer environmental testing, uh, consulting and Jeremy Westcott the team of plant Moran Crest and again Harry Lau were able to interview multiple bidders for this project um, you will note that there was actually two um, firms one was Global Green was disqualified and Dorn Associates withdrew their bid for uh, the work consideration going forward um, if you'll take a look at the tabulation sheet you will see that Sloan out of Redford Michigan uh, is the lowest responsible and qualified bidder um, they are um, somewhat less than the others um, but again, we've had a chance to review the references, take a look at previous work, and also uh, we have a, pro a performance labor material bond as well. Um, so again, the references have all checked out, their financials have also checked out. And thirdly, again, with the PLM bond, we feel very confident, um, both from Plant Marine Cross's standpoint, as well as Jeremy Westcott and Bar uh, ETS, that we're all recommending this for consideration. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments by board members? Mrs. McDonald. Uh, thank you, Paul. Um, we have a stop gap in place as far as any protecting us as far as change orders go in Correct. the middle. Correct. Yeah, it was interesting. We spent, um, Plummer and Crest team and the district's administration spent a lot of time with Sloan, Eric, and his team just to make sure there's no gaps. And that's why I did the extra due diligence with them in uh, comparison to the other two firms that were interviewed. And it's all inclusive in terms of the work scope that's there. So That's good. It is. Thank you. Any other questions or comments before members? We have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Laura that's supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And Mrs. Bonifield, will you please take the roll? Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 7E, approval of Franklin High School Environmental Service Agreement. May I have a motion, please? Mrs. Burnham. Yes, Mr. Centers. Move that the Board of Education approve the attached recommendation from the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, to re-engage the contract and approve the, addition, the attached change orders for the high, Franklin High School Environmental Consultants to ETC Environmental Consulting at an estimated total cost of $25,000, including contingency funds of $5,000. Cool. Mrs. McDonald? Mm -hmm. We have a motion on the floor by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. McDonald. Mr. Wills. Thank you. Um, if you recall, uh, previous to last summer, there was a request for proposals for environmental management. Um, both Nova Environmental and DETC Group were uh, selected for those particular projects. Um, in ter team, terms of reviewing the previous scope of work, um, the team does feel very satisfied with the uh, work that ETC has done, and we're recommending them to renew their engagement uh, for $20,000 plus the $5,000 allowance for testing reports, et cetera. Uh, this is an hourly rate on a time and material basis not to exceed $25,000. Are there any questions or comments on this item? No? We have been... Motion on the floor by Mr. Centers, supported by Mrs. McDonald. And Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll, please? Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is item 7F, approval of bid results for the Franklin High School abatement from the 2013 bond. And President, may I have a motion? President Burton. Yes, Mrs. Jarvis. Move that the Board of Education approve the attached recommendation 
from the owner's representative, Plant Moran Cressa, to approve the abatement project budget for Franklin High School for a total amount of $193,890, including contingency funds, and authorize Superintendent Randy Lepa to negotiate and execute final contracts on behalf of Livonia Public Schools Board of Education with the contractors on the attached list of contractors awarded bids document from Environmental Testing and Consulting Incorporated. Support. We have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Jarvis, center, uh, supported rather by Mr. Centers. Getting late. So <laughs> similar to Riley and Emerson, uh, their scope of services was issued in January timeframe. And on February 25th, uh, there were multiple bids relative to the scope of work. Keep in mind, it's actually a two summer phase. So it's summer of 15 as well as summer of 16. It's a big school. Um, we will get to all of it. And again, working with the architect and construction manager, looking at the phasing considerations. Um, you will see in there, there is the cover letter from environmental testing and consulting in tab E3. Um, in terms of total environmental, they are out um, of Toledo, Ohio, and have done actually a multitude of uh, projects in Southeast Michigan. Uh, Coincidentally, we're actually working with them on Detroit Wayne Mental Health's 80,000 square foot abatement. They're actually doing a very good job. So at the end of the day, uh, the recommendation from the team is to award uh, two total uh, for the two summer phase work. Other questions or comments from board members? No. Nope. We have a motion on the table from Mrs. Jarvis, sent, uh, supported by Mr. Centers and Mrs. Bonifield. Will you take the roll? Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Summers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 7G, approval of resolution for best practices and incentive grant. Actually, if I can uh, back up just a moment. Uh, Mr. Wills, uh, I'd like to publicly bring to bring to the public public's attention because folks who may not have been looking at all these documents along with us may not have have noticed but every one of the four of those five uh, that we just looked at came in under budget and the other one was right at budget correct. Is that correct that is correct so obviously there's a lot of activity in southeast michigan between a new stadium project that's going on uh, the wraps up of detroit medical centers capital projects so be able to get the drawings done early get them out for bids early have them award early on that allows the long procurement so again thank you to the board and to the district for moving things quickly in your end as well so thank you it's, it's thank been, you. It's been a, a group project and uh, absolutely we, we all have, had, have been racing under incredible deadlines and and it's it's uh, paying off and it's appreciated very good thank, thank you. you thank, thank you. you i'll address my board for jumping backward there for a moment uh item 7g uh, approval of resolution for best practices incentive grant may we have a motion please uh president burton mrs mcdonald Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached resolution for the financial best practice incentive grant that is offered by the State of Michigan for the 2014-15 school year. Support. We have a motion on the table by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. And we will be hearing from Mrs. Abbey. Thank you very much. I have quickly moved from operations to finance over here. Thank you, <laughs> um, Thank you very much. Again, along with uh, those uh, significant number of bids that we talked about at our committee meeting two weeks ago in uh, detail, we also talked about our um, best practices board resolution. You will recall, of course, that this is the uh, third year that the state of Michigan has offered an incentive for what they call best practices, um, meaning uh, several items that they would like each school district in the state to be doing and rewarding us with um, $50 per student. Unfortunately, that's down from uh, prior years years it was higher 52 the year before and then a hundred dollars the year before for that amount of money um, however these are items that Livonia Public Schools really did anyway generally there's a couple of uh, small items uh, that we added which is a portal to Michigan stool, school data but generally speaking these are um, initiatives that Livonia Public Schools was engaged with uh, uh, for many years. Um, so we did review the list of uh, best practices. We're required to meet seven out of nine. Uh, we have done that. We've included that in your packet as well as we've talked about that at a study session as well as our committee meeting. Um, you have the resolution in front of you. What we have done is crossed out the two that, that we are not considering a part of Livonia Public Schools um, best practices initiative 
and um, we are looking forward to having this approved so we can get that to the state. Uh, again, for Livonia Public Schools, at $50 a student, that's a little over $700,000 uh, from the school aid fund into our general fund. So uh, with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from board members? Nope. Uh, we have a motion on the table by Mrs. McDonald, uh, supported by Mrs. Jarvis. Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll? Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Bonifield says yes. <clears throat> President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Item 7H is the adoption of the 2014-2015 third budget amendments. May we have a motion? President Burton. Mr. Johnson. Thank you. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District adopt the attached amended budgets for the 2014-15 school year, general fund, special education fund, debt retirement fund 2013 bond series one, Debt Retirement Fund 2014 Refunding Bond, 2013 Bond Fund, Building and Site Technology Fund, Sinking Fund Capital Projects, 2012 Capital Projects Fund, Food Service Fund, Health and Welfare Fund, Athletic Fund, Scholarship Fund, and Funded Projects Fund. With motion on the table by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Laura. And we'll be hearing from Ms. Abby. Thank you very much. Um, again, this was an item that we had brought to the Board of Education Finance Committee meeting and Committee of the Whole meeting um, at our last session two weeks ago. And at that time, I did uh, go over in detail the changes in our general fund uh, from budget amendment number two to budget amendment number three. I've also provided that summary again at, um, at your table this evening so that you have that information. Uh, what we will be asking for is a re resolution to adopt all those funds that uh, Mr. Johnson just read, the changes for the third budget amendment. I'll briefly go over this general fund changes, if I may. Uh, again, you have this document in front of you. Um, very, uh, really nominal increases or changes in this budget amendment that we would like to uh, go over. Um, one, the revenues have increased um, $1.3 million. As we discussed at our last finance committee meeting, most of that, about $1.1 million, is a reflection of the increase in state aid that we've received for retire increase in retirement rate, back basically. This is the unfunded stabilization rate that you hear about, or 147C and 147D that you've heard about. Um, that revenue is also, also offset by the exact amount in increased expenditures for the retirement costs. So there's an increase of 1.1 in revenue. There's also an increase in 1.1 million of expenditures, really with a net zero effect on our fund balance. Um, other changes to revenue that you see in that $1.3 million, we did see uh, an increase of about $400,000 in prior year revenues from the state. Those are adjustments that go up and go down and go up and go down, and each time that we see them, we do bring them to the Board of Education so you have the most up-to-date information. And then there were some minor changes in some of our transfers and other revenues. Again, overall revenues increasing $1.3 million. Expenditures actually increased uh, about $700,000. As I said, it did go up $1 million uh, due to the retirement rate, but we did see some reductions in our salary and benefit costs, uh, as well as some other minor changes. The other big change that we had mentioned in this budget amendment was actually in purchase services, which is our utilities. As you know, uh, January and especially February were very cold months, and we have made adjustments uh, upward in our expenditure budget for those utilities. Uh, hopefully, I've been conservative, and in the next budget amendment that I bring you in June, I'll be able to lower that number a little bit. Uh, but in order, to again, to be uh, conservative, we are estimating an increase there. Um, so overall, again, uh, changes of 682000 We are pleased to say that provides a, a change in our overall deficit. Uh, by six to the good, by 640,000. Looking at overall fund balance at the end of the 630-15 school year of just a little over a million dollars. So that's gone up from our last estimate of 400,000 to just a little over a million dollars. So while we'd certainly like to see that higher, we are hopeful that we can keep it at least here and continue to make efforts to uh, continue to increase that fund balance. 
Um, you'll recall one of the things that we mentioned at the committee meeting is that, uh, as Dr. Leopold had outlined in a great deal of detail, when we brought you that very first budget amendment uh, in the fall this year, early, actually late summer, um, we had not met all of our budget targets for this year, and so we have made efforts to control spending, um, not to fill every position, uh, only re fill required positions, and other areas where we've been able to uh, work at trying to save some money and build up that fund balance a little bit this year and get closer to all of our targets. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to stay on that path. A um, couple of things to think about, of course, as I mentioned, uh, hopefully utilities will come in uh, a little bit lower. Things we monitor this time of year are utilities, substitute costs, overtime, those kinds of things that will fluctuate in the budget. Um, the only other thing I just wanted to mention is, as you know, we've offered an early retirement incentive this year. Um, we don't know yet whether that will be uh, accepted by our employees or meet our targets. If it does, I would probably come back in the June amendment and have to update our budget for severance, which would be a good thing if that happens. So that will help us meet our next year's targets for budgets as well. So that might be one thing that we bring to you uh, in our June budget amendment. So with that, again, we do uh, bring you a June amendment as well with any other changes we have in our budgets. Um, and as you had an opportunity to get the entire um, general fund and other district budgets book in detail um, last week in your packet that outlines all of the other funds that we've asked you to approve for tonight. Uh, there were not significant changes in those, so um, I think those will be fine to move forward with. And then, of course, we always update our graphs and the detailed information in the back of the budget book, so you have that as well. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments from board members? Mrs. McDonald. Um, Ms. Zabby, thank you again for the presentation this evening. Um, the increase in the uh, retirement from the beginning of the year to now, it, to me, is a lot. Um, but how, what kind of steps or increases are we going to be seeing in, you know, for like next school year? I mean, do you have an idea of what that's going to be at this point or? We don't have, so there's two different retirement rate increases. They're the ones that I would say are our normal retirement rate increases that affect our budget. We've seen them at a half a percent. We've seen that at a percent. Right now we're seeing that as flat for next year. So that would be what's in the governor's proposal right now would be flat for the next school year. These retirement rates that I'm talking about, the 147C, 147D, those are called rate stabilizations. Mm -hmm. And while that rate is going up, and what's that, what that's helping to do is get money into the pension system, so those funds are going into the pension system, increases those expenditures. They hit our books just like the regular retirement rate, but then we're also getting some resources from the state to offset those costs. So, and those were 4% la rough numbers, 4% last year, a little over 7% this year for the stabilization rate. So I don't know what those will be for next year. Those haven't been identified. But again, those should generally be fund balance neutral. Okay, Dr. Lepa? I was just gonna have what Lisa said, and that is the bottom line on our budget is, if it goes up a million or in a million and a half, there'll be an increase in expenditures and in revenues. So we're looking so at- it's covering the increases then? Exactly. Exactly. So they currently are correct. Yeah, so from a budgeting standpoint, you know, we know at least we don't have to budget for an increase without additional revenue. So that's why we typically bring it uh, during the budget amendments when we have a good idea from the state of, well, here's how much we're actually, here's what the cost is going up and here's how much we're going to reimburse you. Right. The big question when we're doing our planning is what's, are we going to have a net increase in cost? And as Lisa mentioned right now, we're looking at nothing for next year. So <laughs> back on what because... <clears throat> You know, we've had increases in the past. All right, thank you. Mrs. Laura. Thank you, President Burton. Ms. Abbey, would you just remind us or me again, when is the deadline for the retirement incentive? Um, it's early April, and I think that our, you know, there's a deadline time and then there's a retraction right. period. So I think it would be early May before we would have a definitive answer. I think it's around mid-May and then it's, no, it's early April, excuse me, it's early April and there's a period of time and then it's early May that the board would have that information. Thank you. Are there any other comments or questions? The one thing I would like to point out too, back to our conversation about the, the retirement, it's understandable that the public is confused at times when 
they get messages saying we're putting more money into the edu uh, into education from the state and yet we're seeing less money in our classrooms from the state and this is just one example of how that happens the state is in this case giving us 1.3 or, or or in the ballpark of a million I guess it was million dollars from the state so if the state is saying we're putting another million dollars toward education right what the public needs to recognize is not one dime of that million dollars is coming into our classrooms it's going it back right into our budget so we can turn around and write a check out for the exact dollar figure that just came in to go into the retirement system it is the retirement system for our education employees that is that is true and that is where some of the confusion comes in by saying we're putting an extra in this case a million dollars into Livonia Public Schools education when in essence it's going right back out to the retirement system and not a dime comes to our classrooms and th th the public needs to continue to be aware of of the the shell game at times of money happening as we're fighting to educate our students as best we can. Yeah, thank you. It's it, it is important. It is a lot of money, and it's good for the resources in the pension system and like resources in our classrooms as well. It is very necessary in both. It's just it's, it's important that people be clear where where it's coming from and where it's going to, and what we can really call it all. Um, are there any other comments or questions before we vote? We have a motion on the table by Mr. Johnson, supported by Mrs. Laura. Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll, please? Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is item 8A, approval of teachers. May I have a motion? I'm uh, I'm sorry, teachers for approval. Uh, may I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Bonifield. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and offer employment to the 2014-15 school year to the teachers listed on the attached document. Support. We have a motion on the table by Mrs. Bonifield, supported by Mrs. McDonald. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dr. Leba. Yes, we have uh, three teachers for recommendation tonight. One is a uh, part-time uh, physical education teacher who will actually provide services through our shared time program at our Niji Euro School. So this is a program improvement for us that uh, we're uh, pleased to get finalized as we're continuing to implement uh, that program. And the other two are uh, filling uh, existing openings in our school district that were in place prior to the semester break which means by contract we're required to fill those positions and so we have a kindergarten teacher at one of our elementary schools and a second grade teacher at one of our elementary two schools that are filling openings that are required by the contract thank you are there any other questions or comments on this okay, seeing none we have a motion on the table by mrs bonifield supported by mrs mcdonald Ms. mrs bonifield will you take the roll please mrs bonifield says yes mrs mcdonald yes Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mrs. Laura? Yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is 8B, leaves of absence. May I have a motion, please? <clears throat> Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the superintendent and approve the request for leaves of absence as listed below. Rebecca Blossom, David Fuller, Danielle Kearney. Support. We have a motion on the table by Mr. Centers, and that was supported by Mrs. McDonald. Is that correct? Did we hear that correctly? Yep. Okay. Two female voices down there. Sometimes <laughs> they kind of blend. <laughs> uh, are there, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dr. Leopa. Yes, we have uh, recommended uh, three different leaves that have been. Uh, uh, process through our personnel departments uh, the requests came in and they meet all of our requirements in regards to approving the leaves and so we're recommending that they're approved tonight thank you any questions or comments on these okay. we have a motion on the table by mr. centers supported by mrs. McDonald and mrs. Bonifield will you take the roll mr. centers yes mrs. McDonald yes mrs. Jarvis yes mr. Johnson yes mrs. Laura yes Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is 8C, retirements. May I have a motion, please? President Burton. Mrs. Laura. 
move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public School School District adopt the attached resolution <laughs> of appreciation for the services rendered by Robert Bullinger, Janice Ford, Linda Richardson, Norma Norman, I'm sorry, Sorella, Nancy Skernecki. Support. We have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Laura, supported, I believe, by Mr. Johnson was first, although we have quite a few. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Just congratulations. Dr. Leifa, would you like to address this, issue, this item? Yes, uh, we have the recommendation for five different uh, members that are members of our support staff in our school district and uh, names that are familiar to many people who work inside of our school district. Uh, they're wonderful people. They've committed a significant amount of time to our school district, and they deserve all of our recognition for working on behalf of our kids. They certainly are representative of the amazing support staff that we have in the school district. And with your approval tonight, we will be very, very proud to present to them the resolutions on behalf of the Board of Education, uh, recognizing and honoring their, their service. Thank you. Any other comments? We have a motion on the floor by Mrs. Laura, uh, supported by Mr. Johnson. And Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll? Mrs. Laura? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Centers? Yes. Mrs. Jarvis? Yes. Mrs. McDonald? Yes. Mrs. Burton says yes. yes. President Johnson, or President. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Burton says yes. Yep. Voting by yes. proxy. Yes. 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 President Burton, yes. Thank President. you. And this vote is unanimous. Next item on our agenda is item nine reports from the superintendent. Dr. Leopold. Thank you very much, President Burton. Uh, we had a, a great weekend here in uh, LPS. Uh, our Stevenson hockey team was playing for the state finals down the road at Compuware. And uh, it was a great season, even though uh, we, we didn't prevail in the final. It was a great season for the kids. I uh, want to recognize Coach Dave Mitchell. Uh, he's an amazing person who puts his heart and soul into uh, his efforts with the team and really is just representative of so many of our uh, uh, staff members and our uh, employees who uh, go above and beyond to provide these extracurricular opportunities for kids and work so, so much more than um, – then uh, they're compensated for, for the little amount of money they get to be to be a coach. Uh, I, I want to take a second, too, just to recognize uh, our fans, our kids, uh, and, our, and our players for their sportsmanship. Uh, and I think we've mentioned this in the past before, but uh, if you were there, uh, the compliments that we received on Saturday are very similar to the compliments that we receive at all three of our high schools at all sorts of different sporting events, and that is the behavior of our kids, the monitoring of it, of our staff, uh, the behavior of our, of our community uh, is really uh, not only second to none, but it's recognized by other schools across the state. They talk about coming to one of our events and how, uh, how well behaved we are, uh, how, what great spirit we have, and how we really represent what extracurricular activities are supposed to be a, about at our high schools. It, it was just amazing if you just saw, I mean, it was, the place was packed, and if you just saw the way our kids behaved throughout the entire game, supporting their team, but not knocking down the other team at any point in time. In fact, one of their players of the opposing team was injured in front of our kids, and they all sat down. They stood the whole game. They sat down at that point in time to recognize that the kid was hurt, and when he got up and skated off, they all applauded him. Uh, they did not hear that from the athletic director or the principal. They did that on their own. And uh, we have a lot, lot to be proud of because this is exemplary, again, of what happens at every one of our high schools uh, at the vast majority of our events. And um, uh, it's, it's a great program that we have and great kids, and uh, we should be very proud of that. So I just want to recognize that and also recognize one of our colleagues up here at the board table, Mr. T Ms. Tammy Bonifield, who was recognized by MASB for achieving her level one certification and at the same time recognized for her board uh, award of merit. So, Tammy, phenomenal job, your dedication. You. Your dedication to our school district is, uh, is noted and uh, we're very lucky to have you. So, thank you. That's it for tonight. Thank you. The next item on our agenda is item 10A. Hearing from board members 
And item A is the first reading of board policy EBA, disposition of real property. This is a uh, first reading of policy. There will not be a vote on it tonight. Uh, however, Dr. Leopold, would you like to address this item? Yes, uh, this is an item that we've talked about at multiple meetings before tonight. And it really did come out of our community forums as it related to the feedback that we received from the community as it relates to addressing some of our budget issues. And we have a very clear policy in our school district in regards to if we dispose of any real property, what we do with those proceeds. And they're by and large set aside for one-time expenditures because they're one-time proceeds. Uh, but we heard loud and clear from the community that in order to maintain the programs for the kids and maintain the brand of the Livoni Public Schools, that in order to get us through some of these difficult times, uh, they would like to see us use uh, any proceeds that we may get to support our school programs. And so the board looked at its policy, spent some time on it, and we added a sentence that would be clear that if the district's general fund fund balance is below 5%, that the board then would have the option to utilize those funds to help maintain and save programs in our general fund as opposed to the existing policy. If it's over 5%, then it still goes to the building and site fund to be used for one-time purchases. And even if it's below 5%, the board has the option to do that. But this provides the flexibility for the Board of Education as you're making very difficult budget decisions that if our fund equity is down low and we need those dollars to save programs that we have the ability to do that. So that is the purpose of the recommended added change to the disposition of real estate, a real property uh, board policy. And uh, again, we've talked about it multiple times and we uh, would like to see this uh, move ahead. Thank you. That is the first reading of that board policy. The, uh, that same policy will come up for a vote at our next general meeting in April. Next item on our agenda is item 10B, first reading of board policy, board policy JCEC bullying prevention. And again, Dr. Leopold. Yes, we have a very extensive bullying policy uh, in our school district uh, and in our, uh, you have in your board policy to make it clear the expectations for uh, everybody in our schools in regards to uh, bullying and how we're going to address bullying. Uh, the reason that we have this before you tonight is that the state of uh, Michigan did provide or did pass a new law in December related to cyberbullying, which we're all very familiar with. And so we had to look at our bullying prevention policy to see if it met all the criteria that were now underlined under the new law. And while our existing policy did cover the vast majority of things that were required under the board or under the new state law, we did have to make a few changes. And so you will see on page one. Uh, when we talk about the definition of bullying, we include in there including but not limited to cyberbullying. That's an addition to meet the uh, requirements. We also added in there a definition of cyberbullying in regards to what it is, any electronic communication that is intended or that a reasonable person would know to likely harm one or more students either directly or indirectly by doing any of the following and list what that means. So that's much more clearly spelled out as it relates to cyberbullying again in our policy. Down on the next page, page two at the bottom, you can see that we'll be required now to publicize our this policy by putting it on our district's website. We already do that because all of our policies are on our website, but this just clarifies in the policy that we will do that. And last on page three, we had to add a uh, sentence in there to make sure that uh, confidentiality in regards to dealing with any issues that may come before us are handled in an appropriate manner to protect kids. Uh, we do have certain laws and requirements that we have to follow, but outside of that, uh, uh, there's some clarification there to make sure that we're uh, doing what we can to protect kids in the investigation process. And so, uh, again, that's clarification that was outlined in the new law in December. Uh, the vast majority of our policy covers the intent of what was required, and we have those changes uh, because of the change in the state law. Thank you. Again, this is a first reading of that policy. It will be voted on at our April voting meeting. Next item on our agenda is item 10C, second reading of board policies. May I have a motion? Uh, President Burton. Mrs. McDonald. Move that the Board of Education of the Livonia Public Schools School District accept the recommendation of the policy committee and adopt language per the attached documents for the following board policies. A, B, C, A, number of board members. AEA school calendar, EBD 
Board Superintendent Relations, ECAC Special Meetings, GAHA Staff Involvement in Community Activities, IBD2 Special Programs, IHAB Report Cards, JCDA Student Behavior and Conduct, JGCA Student Health Examination, JN Awards and Scholarships, JR Student Records. Support. We have a, a motion by Mrs. McDonald, supported by Mr. Johnson. Dr. Leopa. Yes, so these are all grouped together. Uh, there are a lot of policies here, but they're grouped together because these are really just clerical changes that the Board of Education has made as it reviewed all of its policies over the last year and a half. And so they're just basically cleanup items, no real change in the intent of any of these policies, uh, but include a handful of clerical changes to make sure that they're updated. And also the date on them will all be updated to know, so the community knows that these policies have all been reviewed by the board and updated over the past uh, uh, year and a half. Thank you. Any questions or comments on these items? I President Burton? Yes. Uh, I just want to again uh, commend President Burton, who was the chair of our policy committee, for taking this proverbial bull by the horns uh, over the last year and a half and uh, had us review each and every policy that we have that's resulting in many of these changes. So again, I want to say I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm one of those weird people that likes policy. <laughs> Most people don't understand it. <laughs> don't understand me. <laughs> um, any other comments or questions? Thank you. Um, we have a motion uh, by Mrs. McDonnell and supported by Mr. Johnson. Mrs. Bonifield, will you take the roll, please? Mrs. McDonnell. Yes. Mr. Johnson. Yes. Mr. Centers. Yes. Mrs. Jarvis. Yes. Mrs. Laura. Yes. Mrs. Bonifield says yes. President Burton. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is item 10D, hearing from board members. Uh, what our board decided to do quite some time ago to avoid a lot of redundancy is to uh, ask one more board member to speak for the board uh, to give uh, some wrapping up comments. Uh, others are certainly welcome to, to add anything to that. But tonight we will be hearing from Mrs. Jarvis. Thank you, President Burton. I'd like to share with our community some of the positive things that have been happening in our district recently. Firstly, I'd like to thank the members of our community who came to speak to us tonight. We really do value your opinions and we appreciate your time. I'd like to congratulate all of our honorees tonight. Cherie Bricardo, who won a golden apple. I think she's establishing her own golden orchard. <laughs> um, the art students from Stevenson, Emily, Caitlin, Anne, Andrew, and Carrie, thank you for sharing your talent with us. I'd like to thank Rosedale PTA for their generous gift of iPads to use in their school. I'd like to uh, commend the five retirees that we honored tonight, and I hope that as they turn the page to the next chapter in their lives, that the story continues to be thrilling. I would like to recognize all of our schools participating in the March's Reading Month. I hope reading becomes not only a lifelong habit, but a lifelong pleasure. I'd like to commend the culinary program at Franklin High School for their successful culinary event this past weekend, A Taste of Livonia. Chef Andy and Chris Benarchek and their students uh, put their program in the spotlight and it was a big hit. I would like to also mention Franklin students, Justin M, Matthew M, and Brendan W, who are MHSAA hockey all-state second teamers and also honor um, Chase W, who is an All-State Honorable Mention for Hockey. And I would finally like to mention the Livonia Warriors Robotics Team, who participated this past weekend in competition. Their alliance came in third place at district competition in Woodhaven. Additionally, they brought home the Excellence in Imagery Award, recognizing the design and appearance of their robots, as well as communication, PR, and use of social media. If you want to see more of them in action, the Warriors will be hosting district uh, competition at Churchill on uh, Friday and Saturday, March 27th and 28th, and the public is welcome to come on down and check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have comments from any other board members tonight? Mrs. Bonifield. Um, 
I too would like to uh, really appreciate the comments from Washington and the community. It makes us, um, it, it's great for us to be able to hear from the community. Um, one thing that I would like to suggest to the community and especially to the Washington parents, please go to John Grisbeck. Uh, was here, he spoke regarding the March 26 uh, meeting with our legislators. Please go. Um, and let our legislators know what the impact of the school funding is having on us and how absolutely desperate we have become to squeeze every dollar we can um, out of whatever we can in order to fund our kids' classrooms. We talk about millions of dollars, and it seems like there's a lot of dollars going around. The unfortunate fact is that most of those dollars are um, specified to uh, particular expenses and worst of all um, most of the dollars are not coming into our kids classrooms um, and for us to go out and, and find additional dollars to to bring into our classrooms to be able to fund our kids to be able to buy textbooks um, is uh, we, we need to let our legislators know that that you know, funding the pension fund, that's great, things that we need to do. We need money for our kids' classrooms. And because of Proposal A, it is very difficult for us to get money into our classrooms. Please, please go to your legislators. Um, get online. There are different ways for you to uh, relate notes. Um, there are apps, and I wish I just thought of it, but I wish I have it on my phone. You can see... Um, what your Michigan legislators are talking about and what they're voting and you can actually uh, give them a thumbs up or thumbs down on how they're voting and they will send you notes and I have uh, given my thumbs up and quite often my thumbs down and I have actually gotten responses from legislators thanking me for uh, my feedback on their positions um, so please do whatever you can to contact our state of Michigan legislators and let them know that this is a crisis and please whatever they do we need to get funding into our classrooms thank you mrs. McDonald this is Bonifield sorry <laughs> got both in my head miss <laughs> thank you mrs. Bonifield and we also had a hand raised by mrs. McDonald Hi. Hey, thank you um, on very much thank you for coming tonight um, to the Washington community I know how difficult it is and I know you want to fight and do what's best for your community and we all do truly appreciate everything that hearing from all of you it's important it's important to all of our decisions and we all thank you um, I would like to um, express on another positive note to spin off of Dr. Leopold's um, uh, acknowledgement of the Stevenson hockey team the Stevenson competitive cheer team was the first ever um, varsity competitive cheer team to make state finals and what a accomplishment for these girls uh, um, coach Blair uh, Coons has been working diligently she's been the hockey or the hockey coach <laughs> <laughs> the cheer coach over at Stevenson for the last five years and it's amazing to see um, this program has turned around so so dramatically um, competitive cheerleading isn't what most people think of cheerleading it's uh, athletic training it's gymnastics it's tumbling it's five days a week three hours a day and you still have to go home and do your homework um, these girls work very hard all year and it's a testament to their drive last year they missed states by literally less than a point so they had the motivation to, to really go forward and um, make us all very proud. And as a testament, um, we had girls from the other high schools come to the state finals to cheer our girls on. And that was really a proud moment for me. But even at the association and uh, districts and regional competitions, these girls all collectively cheered each other on from all three high schools. And even at the end of our event, um, our girls came in fifth, which is nothing to be ashamed of out of eight teams. And all of these teams were very, very, very good. Um, our girls stood up immediately when they announced the state finalists, which was Granville High School, and applauded them and cheered them on. And no tears shed by any of them. So it's a true testament to, to our girls and our teams. And 
really to the parents too, because uh, we all had input in that too. So thank you and um, have a good night. Thank you. Mr. Centers. Uh, yeah, just one last thing. I, I had an opportunity to go out and visit a couple of our PTAs uh, the last month. And uh, again, I'm just so impressed with everything they do for our schools. Uh, they, what they've told me was they, they are still looking for membership uh, in PTAs, and it doesn't mean that you have to volunteer tremendously, uh, put in uh, endless hours, but they are still looking for membership. So if you are watching and you're a parent, uh, please go ahead, uh, join your PTA, local PTA. Uh, you'll be, I think, amazed at everything they're doing. And I wanted to uh, reiterate the comments that uh, Tammy put so well about uh, visiting our legislative mm -hmm. forum and uh, to the community members for coming out. Thank you. Mrs. Burton, may I add to the PTA? Um, I know that we uh, sometimes think of PTA as bake sales and volunteering. Um, join your PTA, give the, the PTA those, the part of the dollars that you give for your PTA membership go to the state of Mich Michigan PTA and it also goes to the national PTA. They advocate for our children and the more money that Michigan PTA has in order to advocate for our children, get into Lansing and, and talk to our legislators, the better. It also provides a voice. When we can say we have eight or 10,000 uh, PTA members, um, it carries a tremendous amount of weight with our legislators when Livonia speaks. So please, if all you do for the entire year is write a check to every single PTA that your children, if you have two or three children, please, at different schools, please join every one of those PTAs, become a member, and if that is the only thing that you do for the PTA for the entire year, that makes a huge difference. So please join your join your PTA. It, it will it really does help. How much from other other board members? There's only two left. Okay. Um, I do have a, a couple of comments uh, this evening. Um, as you can tell by some of our comments, it's an end of a winter season, and, and many, many of our teams did quite well mm -hmm. and, and deserve congratulations. Uh, the gymnasts across our entire district, uh, Franklin, Churchill, and Stevenson, put forth seven individual gymnasts that competed for state titles this year, this past Saturday. Um, let me see here. One, two. Three, I believe, of those seven placed in the top ten in the state of Michigan, which they are to be commended. Something even more amazing was brought to my attention by one of the coaches. The G average GPA on the gymnastic team was 3.7. That, I think, is more impressive than the titles on the podium. The girls may disagree with me on that, but but I'm looking more toward the academics on it. Um, it's it's amazing, and, and these girls are not alone in that accomplishment. We have so many really good, strong student athletes, and I'm proud in Livonia that we do refer to them as our student athletes and not just our athletes. Uh, if you have, par have children in this school district, or even perhaps grandchildren, you may be interested in a seminar that's coming up that is district-wide on, on Tuesday, March 24th at 6.30 p.m. It's being held at Stevenson High School. It is uh, being held by uh, administrators, principals, uh, assistant principals, uh, elementary assistance providers, high school counselors, social workers, and athletic administrators, all within the various buildings in our district. They're going to have panels of experts uh, broken into four different areas, so you can attend the area that specifically suits your child's needs. There will be a panel for lower <coughs> elementary, for upper elementary, for middle school, and for high school. And they will be covering such topics as self-esteem with your children, safe use of technology, attention and impulse control, being a better student, handling peer pressure, substance abuse, setting limits and giving consequences, after high school plans, athletics and fitness, and regaining control as a parent. If any of, or, uh, if any of these topics uh, interest you, go to the Stevenson High School website. There is a link there that you can register. It is a free resource for any of the parents uh, in, in Livonia's public school school district. So I would encourage you to take advantage of, of resources like that. The folks who are running this, if you take a look at the list, have some, some incredible credentials behind their names, and we know them personally, and they are phenomenal. Uh, assets to our school district. So go ahead and take advantage of that if, if you so choose. 
Um, I did have a parent who came up to me this week and was thrilled that her son is able to take advantage of one of the very recent policy changes that the board made. In a, this this uh, individual wanted room for a stats class. In previous years, he didn't have room for a stats class because of high, other high school graduation requirements. Due to the change in Michigan state law and the prompt change by this board in changing our policy, he now has room to take that class, which is very important to him uh, as a college-bound as college -bound class. Uh, and she wanted me to pass on that appreciation to the board members for passing that policy and getting that changed so quickly to benefit our students. Um, we've had a whole lot of thanks to a whole lot of people tonight. <laughs> and I'd just like to, to thank again our, our employees in the district. There are 2,000 of them. And even more than that, uh, volunteers in the district uh, that make Livonia Public Schools the really phenomenal district that it is to be. Thank you very much, and have a nice evening. We are adjourned.